welcome to you all. Um, so, I'm going to do a mini sermonette on Easter. Do we know what Easter's about? <coughs> Why is there silence? Do we know what Easter's about? Easter eggs. Oh, good. Are you sure? Good. Excellent. That's cool. So, we're going to take our count from Easter from uh, the Gospel of Luke uh, perspective. Hopefully, the Bible should be working this morning. <laughs> Resurrection, it's arisen. For those who don't understand, it's not been working properly for the last few weeks. So, um, but we're going to take a few highlighted areas. So I just want to read the first sort of five chapters. But before we do start, question. How do you feel this morning? Happy. Happy. Yes. Blessed. Yes. Renewed. Renewed. Cool. Excellent. That's going well then. Hopeful? Yes. Yeah, good. Excellent. We're doing well so far. Right, let's read. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been ro rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared in to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. And we'll stop there for now. How's your imaginations this morning? How are your imaginations this morning? Good, excellent. I'd like you to imagine right now. You are bleary eyed for lack of sleep. And lots of crying. Grief has gripped you. Every thought and every moment feels heavy, exhausting, draining. You have to go and see a dear friend, mentor, teacher. You're going to prepare their body for the final time. How do you feel? <coughs> you arrive to discover the stone to the tomb has been rolled away. Or maybe in our more modern here, where we live here, the ground has been uncovered. The lid of the casket has been removed. How do you feel? I have a two word description. No hope. Can you imagine that's how the women appeared? No hope. That's brought the mood down a little bit, isn't it, this morning? Then two men suddenly appear, dazzling, shining brilliance of light. How do you feel? Scared. Thank you, Steve. <coughs> I wouldn't even be asking who are they, I'd be petrified. I think, I think my name, brain would have been numbed at that point, yes? How do you feel? I think we would all have the reaction of the women, would we not? We would suddenly bow our faces, we would suddenly collapse on the floor, would we not? Some of us might run away. Yeah, thank you Barry for your honesty, my brother, that's brilliant. They may bow their faces, not just due to fear, but also to reverence. I think you would suddenly think, I'm just I'm encountering something not of this world. In the way that I understand, not of this world. How's your imagination so far? Are you sort of there? Can you sort of picture it a little bit? Yeah? And then these men turn around and state this. Good morning! This is Easter, the time of chocolate eggs and fluffy bunnies. 
Did you have your Thorntons this morning or your dairy milk or your real Easter egg company fair trade egg? Oh, and because it's been recorded, there are many other versions. There's the crunchy. There's anyway. Was it delicious? I personally love a state the cream egg. And the other one goes, oh, but I like the Reese's peanut cream one, the new version. Amen? <laughs> we have a surprise for you today as well, they'd say. We have an Easter egg hunt planned. Yeah. And then food and drink. Because this is what Easter is all about. Yes? How would you feel? How would you feel if the da dazzling men suddenly said that to you? Come on, just, just think about it. Really think. You've turned up really... Disp you, you are, three days, you are on the floor. And then you arrive, you see these dazzling men, and you're expecting some real message of, whoa, this is really different. And then they talk about Easter eggs. <laughs> you laugh. You laugh. But that's what Easter has turned into. I was very struck on Good Friday. We, uh, for those that were present, we, we sort of we met at Northala uh, Fields, and we sort of started for the very first time this year doing something at the bottom, sort of started the narrative at the bottom of North Ard Fields. So the idea in, in, in the head was then to sort of walk up to Golgotha as such, to walk up to the cross, to, to sort of pray. So we, we started that with us shouting, crucify him, crucify him. So we the crowd were saying we want to crucify our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we had three crosses, three people carrying crosses. There were plenty of us uh, minister types in clerical collars, you know, it looked a bit Obvious, to be honest, that, that we were there. To me, it looked obvious. As I didn't issue, we slap out the hill, a young couple turned around and said, What's going on? <laughs> Don't, just, what's going on? And I said, It's Good Friday. She went, Oh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, I, I hear the laughter, but actually, for me, I was like, what the, uh, <laughs> Pardon me? You, you don't even know what today is really about. It's not because it's a beautiful sunny day. Uh, I'm not knocking uh, Dennis. And I, I thought it was very funny. Dennis quite rightly said last week when I said, "What do you know what Good Friday's about?" And he said, "It's a day off." <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm not having to go, Dennis, at all. Hear me very carefully. I thought that was he was, you know, being joking. But actually, what he was stating was a way that actually people outside of knowing Jesus think that Good Friday is just a day off. Good Friday is a day off. They have no sense of the fact that there is hope in the message to which we say about our Lord Jesus. So the dazzling white men, Miles all turned up and said, have you had your... Who's had their Easter eggs so far this weekend? <coughs> Raise your hands, be honest. There's nothing wrong with having an Easter egg, alright? Just the point is... Huh? None of you have had it. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, hello. <laughs> hello. Breakfast. It was breakfast, lunch and dinner last night. Anyway. No, it wasn't that bad. And we sit and we think, gosh, that's what Easter's turned into. A fairly despondent message, I would suggest. And then we carry on. Verse 5. <coughs> then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee. And we'll carry on with that in a moment. No, go back up. Don't, don't show them that bit. That's the next surprise in the story. Don't, don't give it away now. Simon. It's like giving the end of your finale of the season. You know what I mean? Don't do it. This thing, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Really gripped me when I read it this week. And then who's read their word life scripture this morning? Who's read it this morning? Come on, come on, come on. Good, three of us. Excellent. Amen. Uh, really, seriously, if you, if you want to learn how to read, or not learn, let's rephrase that. If you want some daily devotional, wordlife.org is really, 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 really good. Okay? Really, really good. And this morning, I couldn't believe it. I saw this as confirmation from what I've been thinking all week. 
they focused on this verse. Why are you looking among the dead for the living? So this is a real question. And this is a real question because this to me was a really, this was a challenging question by the, the men in dazzling clothing. A really, they were angels. The really, really challenging question. What is it they're talking about? I want to unpack that's a real question. So think about it for a minute. What would your thinking be about the fact that somebody asks you, why are you looking among the dead for the living? It's what they expected. Thank you, Samantha. Yeah. Well, they weren't looking for anything, were they? Nobody comes back from the dead. Here's the next question. They're not just talking about physical death. What are they also talking about? this a little bit easier. Let's take the analogy of something dead. What in our world is dead that people get attracted to? Dead with, alright I'll put this, dead in inverted commas. Does that help? Alright I'll just preach it then, fine. It's made up a lot easier. Let us consider the fact that Jesus is alive. Amen. He is risen. Amen. If you're able to, could you please stand? <coughs> Jesus is alive! Amen. See, you sound louder when you're standing. He is risen! Amen. He is alive! Amen. Be seated, just as he told us so. So this Messiah who holds the keys to death and Hades, who is seated at the right hand of the Lord, who is enthroned in power, who is all sufficient, who died and rose again so that we could have life in abundance. Amen. Would you please stand? <laughs> so we can have life in all its abundance. Amen. Maybe seated, seated, it's quite good, that. He's waiting every moment to lavish every spiritual need for you. Amen? Amen. To supply it to you. Don't want to stand again, man. <laughs> 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 Those are two or three times. Did you notice that, yeah? yeah. It's like three days resurrection. <laughs> uh, to supply us with an Easter egg that's known as eternal life. I would humbly suggest that on a daily basis there are times that we just look to fulfil those needs in the dead things that the world has to offer. We, some of us maybe, pop Jesus out like an Easter egg. Once a year. We fancy a bit of chocolate pick-me-up, I'll pop out Jesus. He will make me feel better today. And then once he's all consumed by about 12 o'clock, if I finish this sermon, we pack him back away for another year. Or we pack him away for a few days. We suddenly think, whoops, I've overeaten on Jesus, I need to go on a diet. The challenge of having too much of Jesus can actually make me feel sick because he challenges my lifestyle. He challenges the way I think. He challenges everything that I enjoy doing. And yet, the things we, we nothing wrong in enjoying doing what we're doing, but as long as it's not fulfilling our identity, as long as it's not making up who we are. When Jesus is the place who makes up who we are. Yes? 
This all-sufficient Jesus <coughs> isn't a once-a-year pop-out-the-chocolate egg. Or turn up on Easter Sunday in my refinery. And hoping I can get into my trousers because I over elped my eggs yesterday. I've had no Easter eggs, by the way. No, no, I didn't want any. No, no, no. Jesus in times of trouble because he makes us feel good. But when these dazzling men turned up and said, he is risen, he is alive. Amen. 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 Uh, sorry, he is risen. Amen. He is alive. Amen. It brought hope. Real, permanent, eternal hope. And we're going to just come to that now. Verse 6. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee. That the Son of Man must be portrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. I love that. It's two phrases. You've got the... Angels, basically, let's say angels, makes my life a bit easier in a moment. You've got the angels turning around and saying, do you not remember what he told you would happen? And then they remembered. Okay, so, isn't it amazing to me that when all kinds of grief, trouble, life issues come our way, people seem to forget in the immediate aftermath the promises that God has given them. Yeah? We seem to forget the fact that he's right there with us. Because we can't feel him, maybe. We forget his teaching. We make stupid decisions because we have forgotten his word. Here is the same scenario. They needed reminding. Give them their due. I've got to say, if a friend or a mentor said, by the way, I'm going to die in three days, rose again, I think it's a parable. Yeah? No? Is that just me? Somebody said to you, by the way, I'm, I'm going to die on a cross, and in three days I'm going to rise again. And you've never known anything about the resurrection before. I think he's saying, oh, that Jesus, he's talked to me in parables again. It's something to do with the seeds. Or the lost coin. Metaphor. Parable, metaphor. Yeah. All right. Science fiction, fantasy on TV. That's what I think I would think. But then when you see it, and you've got them saying, but he is risen, he's alive again, you think you'll be going... Oh, hang on a minute, I've got some vague memory. Jesus said this a few weeks ago. But we don't have metaphors or parables anymore, do we? We have Jesus' real promise to us that he is with us and he is risen and we will see him again and anybody else that's died in him will happen again. Amen? Amen. And he's with us today, yes? Amen. And he's with us, as he says in Matthew, to the very end of the age. Amen. And today, in this moment of Easter Sunday, let's not pop him out like an Easter egg. Let's hang on to the promises that he has given us. Amen. If you're able to, please will you stand? <laughs> <laughs> If we're able to, to the end of the age, can we remember the promises that he has given us? Amen. He is alive. Amen. So how do you feel? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hopeful? <laughs> right. But how should we react on a daily basis? How do we react on a daily basis to the promises that Jesus is with us and that we have an eternal home. That we will be raised to life. Amen? Amen. How do we react to that? Let it out. Thank you, Steve. They speak the language. You're right. 
Should we be looking among the dead things of this life to answer our identity? No. no. But we do. And there is Jesus saying, but I'm here. And my burden is light. It's actually not heavy. It's actually really, really light. This is... You can be seated now, sorry. It's quite enjoying that. <laughs> this Easter... For some of us here this morning, we've forgotten what it is when Jesus promised that he is risen from the dead. With all authority, all power in his hands. He can break any cycle that's in our lives. He can break any chain that's in our life. He's broken the power of sin in that moment. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's given us eternal life. Amen? Amen. All he asks is, come follow me. <coughs> come follow me. And some of us this morning, who haven't forgotten any of that? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. The risen Lord is the place for our, our identity. Not the dead things of this world. Let's bow our heads. Now the Lord's talk to you. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.